welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part four in our build of Airfix's new tool um, 135 scale Cromwell tank. Um, so before we move on to building the turret um, we need to just attach this etch. There's also the exhaust cover. I'm going to leave that off um, for final assembly. I want to just paint inside there without anything getting in the way. So I've, I've removed the etch from its fret and you can see it sits on there. Um, so it fits fits quite well. Um, if you recall we've sanded off this little lip that was on there because we have fitted the part upside down on purpose. Um, so yeah it fits in there just nice. Um, what I'm so what we're going to do is we're just going to attach um, attach it with some super glue and we're going to put the super glue just on the points um, that they have put in the etchers fasteners and then possibly a small amount on each end um, that way if there's any lifting of the uh, of the etch which there probably won't be, but if there is, it will look um, it will look natural. So I imagine they would have um, stitch welded this on. Uh, I'm guessing. I've not looked at any reference photos, um, and the photo in the instructions doesn't give us a way round for it to face. So I'm working on the cut corners facing outwards there we go that is on right then we are now at step 18 which is uh, building up the main gun um, just something to note in the instructions um, there is two parts here that don't have part numbers um, so these are the two uh, two of the poly caps doesn't tell you that the poly caps um, so I did just take a moment looking at it and go what's that and then realized it must be the poly caps so to allow the gun to move um, so just worth noting that um, the other thing that's worth noting um, and it's really nice and uh, also causes a bit of disappointment at the same time um, the machine gun here gets mounted into this piece separately. Um, so here's the pieces here. I've, I've already removed all of these and cleaned them up. Um, and so this is a really nice solution because it means you can, if you want, paint this um, gun separately because um, it's a lot easier to get get to it that way. Um, but also when you put it together, I can just pop it in there. It's a little fiddly but not too bad. Once you've got it in there, it really does look nice. You've got you've got the hole there that the gun goes through. It looks very realistic. Um, and I think it's a really nice solution. But why didn't they do the same thing with that? Which looks like a lump of plastic in comparison. It's exactly the same I, I, I don't get it. Um, it's almost like two different designers have looked at it. If they'd done that on that, that would have looked infinitely better. Anyway, just an observation. Okay, so um, these parts are all cleaned up. I'm going to glue this in now. I've just popped it in to demonstrate um, how it looks anyway. So we'll get that in. Um, if I was building this normally I would probably have painted that gun separately um, but for the purposes of what we're doing here which is just having a look at how this builds up um, quite happy to paint it separately just making sure it's flat and straight yep yeah, that looks good okay the poly caps just push inside um, and the fit is nice and snug. 
so we now need to glue this part onto the back of there doesn't seem to have an orientation particularly oh yes it does yeah yeah there's one side that's heavier than the other okay well that clips in there nice and tight no issues with that gives you three location points to glue so that's the gun assembled um, okay so the main gun has a separate um, front section for the, for the muzzle there was a small injector pin mark um, on the side of the muzzle but it was raised so it was just a case of carving it off um, there are two little indents in the top here for some location points um, so you just need to line it up into those like so that fits a little looser put some glue in there and I'm just going to make sure that's straight Yep, looks good. Okay, and then the gun. Okay, so let's fit these onto here next. Okay, just push in. It says on the instructions to glue the um, poly caps in, but I don't see a need. Just pull, pulled that off, putting that in, so we'll put a bit more glue on that. The fit on there is incredibly tight. We'll put quite a bit of stress on the uh, on the part trying to move it. So I imagine once you've got it in the position you want, you're gonna just leave it there. Okay, and then I'm gonna. It suggests putting the gun on before passing it through the mantle. Uh, just for ease, I'm gonna glue this on first. So the little cutouts are at the bottom and the gun goes that way round oh, helpful if I put these in the right direction wouldn't it there we go okay so um, I've got them facing the right way now um, and they're gonna need a little bit of holding together um, so I'm just putting some glue on this first side and I'm going to hold that into place for a sec as you can see it doesn't quite want to sit flat and I'm not sure why this, this part here is totally flat I've checked it When I put a peg on it to clamp it down, it just opened this gap up a little bit and bent this. So um, I th I'm assuming that the I'm assuming that this part here isn't fully 90 degrees, um, and that's why it's not sitting properly. It's only a minor issue, obviously. Um, now we'll put some glue on that other side. I'll just 
hold that for a sec. Looks quite nice that now, it's uh, all done, it certainly makes a difference, that solution to the machine gun. Okay, let's put some glue down there. <laughs> Reminds me of when I was a youngster and um, I built um, an Airfix 1600 ship um, and I was using tube glue uh, and I put so much on the bottom of one of the funnels that the funnel had, had bent a little bit and it looked all dented and I really liked the look so I then, I then went round with the glue and filled up the um, the rest of the funnel and the, and the second funnel I can't remember what ship it was now but I clearly remember these funnels all melting and distorting and me thinking that looked pretty cool <laughs> they looked all dented <laughs> Okay, so that's the gun mantle done, um, and that completes step 18, so we will move on. So step 19, we're building up the basic turret, we've got some more drilling to do, Again, no indication of the drill bit sizes, so it's work it out for yourself. Um, looks like different size holes, um, and it depends on which solution you're doing, what you're drilling. So, let me take a look at that, um, and we'll clean up the parts. And um, now that's interesting. Yesterday, I was watching um, Oscale modelling. And he was commenting that um, Trumpeter wanted him to use a rectangular drill bit and that he didn't, he couldn't find any. Um, and now Airfix want you to use a square drill bit on the inside of part D1. I wonder if you found some, I'll have to ask him. Okay, so I've removed all the parts for step 19 here. Um, and what you can see is there's different drilling options depending on whether you building A or B. Now because I want to controversially use the hedge cutter I am doing option B which means I have a lot less drilling to do just two holes in that single piece there and nothing on there. Um, doesn't matter whether you're doing um, A or B you still need to drill square holes there um, but I'm going to go with round holes for now and then um, deal with that when we need to fit whatever it is we're putting there. Um, so we've got two different sizes to drill. I'm going to drill the smaller one first. And we use the same size drill for these square holes. I've checked the fit of these first before we've uh, done that. Okay, so that seems to have come through on what appears to be some form of bracket. Um, so clearly we're covering that up with something. Just run that back through there. good um, and then we use this now um, I bought this at a model show some time ago don't buy one the utter junk um, most of the drill bits broke first time I used them only a couple of the real thicker ones um, have survived um, there um, I use their you, know, you can see have all sorts of issues with it it's junk um, their um, sprue cutters are amazing. Uh, the, these things are the best sprue cutters I've had by a long, long way. They're better than God Hand, they're better than Tamiya, they are the best. This is the worst drill I've ever used. Um, the drill bits break, the handle comes off constantly because you've got this nice looking um, handle. Um, that's totally smooth. Sometimes you can't get purchase. It's just 
utter junk. Um, don't get one. I don't even like the way the drill bits work. I don't like it. it's a single way twist and I don't like it um, but it just happened to be a drill bit that was the perfect size for this hole so whilst I've got it we will use it okay right I've cleaned up all the parts um, that build up the um, turret what the instructions want you to do is build up the slab sides around the the base and then put the um, top in place. Now when you look at it, there's a little location ridge there, so we're going to run some glue on that and put it in place, but you've, you've got to line all this up by eye, then you put the next one in place, and as you go round you sort of wing and a prayer that you've got this um, fully straight and I can imagine that we're going to have a little bit of a problem trying to get that on because we might not have got these lined however when you look at how the top fits on on the inside of each piece there's this little location point and then you've got these little um, cutouts here so what happens is the cutout sits inside the location piece. So that fits totally square, can't move, can't be in the wrong place. And they're all the same. So I'm putting these on the wrong side, so you, obviously you can, you can get it wrong if you really try, but there. So that's perfect. So it makes sense for, I think, to actually build this up on the turret roof and then slot your base on top of these ridges. So I think that's the wrong way around personally and we're gonna do it my way. See if uh, I'm making sense or I'm a blithering idiot. So, um, I'm going to start with the back plate um, and we'll just glue that into place. My uh, brush isn't fully immersing in the glue anymore so I have to put a, little, a few more dabs on than normal. I'm just going to run a little bit of glue over this top edge to just get rid of some of that sanding dust anyway. Give me a nice, uh, nice straight edge there. That looks good. Okay, see that fits in nice and square and you know it's perfectly in place. Just make sure I put this one on the right side because obviously um, I'm doing this different to the instructions. So that goes there, that goes there. Yeah, I was right first time. Actually, I think the shape is such that you can't really put them in the wrong place. So we'll put some glue in the location points first. And then we'll put some on this join here. That should do that. Yep. And then we'll do this forward one. Yeah, this is a much better idea than trying to stick them on the base. Uh, I'm not a blithering idiot after all. Bit 
isolate. Make sure that's together. I can see a little bit of light through that joint then. Oh, that seems to be all good. And I'll do the same there. So the real test will come in a minute when we try and put the bottom of this turret on but I don't see why there'd be an issue, it just sits on those location points. Okay, that's the turret sides done. Just making sure that I clean that properly before we have a go. There we go, look at that. That's a much better way than the instructions, uh, much better way. Just a nub there. There we go, happy with that. Well, it looks like a Cromwell toilet. So the next thing we need to do is add this um, and the gun is on the right hand side looking out, not looking to. Now the fit of that is not very positive. So you need to get it in the right place, check your alignment before you uh, glue it. It's easier to do it that way because it sits on these. So the inside of that part is just hanging on there. Um, and as you saw, there's some play backwards and forwards there. I'm going to put, I'm going to put some thicker glue on that. I think. First time I've used this today, so we'll uh, just clear that through. I find if I do that first time I use it, um, most of the time, it gives me no issues for the rest of the day. Not always, of course. Okay. Sorry if you can hear my stomach, I've not had my breakfast yet. There we go. Right. Let's leave that to dry. Well that is one turret. So, right, that. so we're now on step 20 which is these small parts here um, which I've already cleaned up so let's get them placed in. Um, the um, G19 part which is this um, sort of hook, well, it's like an eye that's bolted on the side, I'm fairly sure these are oversized. They'll look nice on absolutely. Um, but I'm absolutely sure that they'll get replaced by photo etch by Edward or someone. Is it pronounced Edward? Edard? I don't know. Different people seem to have a different pronunciation. 
I've always said Ed Ward, I don't know why. Okay, that's those two bits in place. And then we have this hatch opening. Fits nice and tight with all of these. No issues there. And we'll go around this other side. I've got this extra rivet detail to add. Um, now you must be careful of the orientation of that because it has two little flanges on it and they should be um, one at the top, one at the bottom. 180 degrees parallel type of thing. Okay, that's that one. Another couple of these. I'm guessing they're tie downs for. Uh, I don't know, is it for hanging tracks or camouflage or is it got a tarpaulin cover on or I'm not quite sure. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. this hatch and that then completes step 20 no fit issues at all on that step just as he says that yeah and then he dropped that through the hole but that's my fault not the kit can see a little bit of light through that I don't know whether that would be right whether there'd be a seal or something in there in real life just make sure you've got that um, in the correct position and it's not sort of swung in too far because it seems to want to do that a little bit. Didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah we've got the same there. You can see a bit of light through there, there's a bit of a gap. I uh, have problems with my light again. You can see a little bit of light through there. Okay, that's step 20 done. Okay, so we're now moving on to step 21, um, which is the um, coupler uh, and the uh, blade sights there. At least that's what I think they are. So, um, those two sights need to go into the um, square holes we had to drill. So I've already cleaned up the parts. So let's just see how we're gonna uh, tackle fitting. So, yeah. yeah, if we had typical uh, modern airfix instructions, this would be a lot clearer. I think these two parts that sit on the deck here, I think they end up sitting flat um, on the surface there, rather than standing proud a little bit. I'm not 100% sure of that, but probably about 95% through flicking forward and looking at the pictures. If we had typical airfix instructions, then these parts would be shown in red on the on the next picture, and we we may have had a clearer clearer view. Um, what is obvious is that the square peg isn't going to go in that round hole. Um, so we've got two options: we can either widen the hole a little bit, which I'm a bit concerned about because we might cause some damage that we've then got to fill, or we can narrow down this peg a little bit, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off, test fit it. So I'm not rounding it off, I'm keeping it square. I'm just trimming it down, see if I can get it um, just small enough that it'll fit inside the hole that we've drilled. And even if we break this off, it's not the end of the world because it's sitting flat on the turret top when done. No. 
Okay, I've gone round and, and scraped the uh, location pin um, all the way around with a knife just to thin it down a bit and it now does does fit. So we'll run a bit of glue into that. And uh, that's one out of the way. Because it's sat on the surface, the glue is capillary out anyway. So I think what I'm going to do with this smaller one um, is I'm going to going to have an attempt at thinning down the look. Trouble is, this location lug is so small that if you trim it, you could be making it slightly off centre. So I'm going to remove the location lug altogether and just glue this on the surface. I think that's probably better. I have no doubt that as soon as Edouard gets hold of this, you'll be asked to um, sand that bracket off and then replace it with etch. There we go, that's that on. So next is the coupler top. Um, and this mechanism top corner. Right. Oh, okay. Now, this is interesting. If you look really closely, um, I'm not sure if we can pick it out there, is there are some cast markings. There's a V and then some numbers, um, D, B, S, letters, not numbers. Um, they need to be facing um, outwards, according to the photo reference. Now, there is actually a little location hole and lug as well to help ensure that you get the right orientation. Well, that clicks in nicely, so let's just glue that in as well. And then we've got um, little hinges that need to go in. These were, um, they needed quite a, a, a bit of careful clean up, just because they're so small really. Let's have a look at what's going on there. in so let's get some glue on that one that's in a square so the nub on these is underneath on the mating surface so if you don't get it completely off you won't get the part in there we go um, but once cleaned up properly, fit is good. So that completes step 21. So in step 22, um, we've got the bins if you're doing version A. Now I'm doing version B, but we'll build these up just so we can have a look at what they look like. Um, the hatch, vent, and the, the tops of the viewports. So let's get those parts out and clean. Right then, I've built up these two bins. So there's a larger one and a smaller one. So if you're building version A, the larger one goes on um, the right hand side as you face out. Um, so those go in the holes that we would have drilled um, in the earlier stages. So the bins look okay, um, but they have open backs. Now obviously, well let's just, I'm not gonna use these, so let's just take these location lugs off and get a view of what that would look like on. See if you can see inside it. So the bin would have gone just there. Um, it's very difficult to see but you could just about see inside. I think it's worth blanking that off with a bit of plastic card. Um, 
but otherwise the bins look okay. The bracket that sits on the inside here fitted okay. Um, it lines up with these um, support brackets on each side. Um, so you have to be careful you've got that lined up and it will need a little bit of clean up to make sure it's perfectly aligned and, and, and straight. Um, but otherwise they go together okay. You've got some nice detail on the front there for the um, fastening. So yeah, they're all right, um, but we're not using them. Um, so it does say you have an option to have the um, coupler open or closed and they provide um, these interior details that glue in. So we'll just glue those in just for fullness of, of the build and see how they look to look like. So if you're going to have the um, coupler open, there are some eject pin marks that will be visible. Um, I'm going to have mine closed clearly. I don't like having open doors with no interior. Um, but there are a couple of eject pin marks that would need clearing up. Um, so anyway, that in interior detail fitted okay. Let's And that goes in beautifully. Let's just knock together the other one. I noticed I've just left a little bit Right, finish that bit. Okay, and drop that in. Uh, well, that's a nice positive fit as well. So that's all good. Next we'll pop this vent in, so let's just test fit that, yeah, that's good too. That's that done. And then we've got these vision port tops, which are the same as the ones on the hull. So we know we've got no issues with those. Just a reminder that you've got some ejector pin marks in the top. Um, they're not visible, but you do want to make sure you've got no flash on them. Okay, that completes step 22. So we're on the final two steps of this build um, in terms of construction. So we've got two more hatch covers, what I think is a light, and then the base of the um, antenna. So I'll get those parts out and cleaned up. So just like before, the um, hatch here can be modelled in an open or closed position. Um, and just like before, there is an interior detail to add. Um, and just like before, we've got a couple of ejector pin marks that you're gonna to have to deal with if you're gonna model those hatches open. And if you're putting a figure in and you'd want them open, you would have to deal with um, the ejector pin marks, but it's just a small Mr. Surfacer job. Well, fits nice for those again, um, as we've now come to expect with this kit. There's some additional detail moulded onto one of these, um, so there's like um, 
a latch detail. Let me show you. There's a little latch detail on the on the edge there, um, which should be on the back hatch, not the front. So I need to just get them correct, even though you won't see it. Thirdly, the fit against the hinge here. It's just that the fit is that tight, but you can see if you want to model it up, it holds itself up really well. If you want to model it closed, you've got to push it and shove it to get it into place a bit. But there we go. That's a lovely fit once it's in place. down. Um, then we have the aerial here, now um, that's quite nicely done. Um, you will want to drill that out further to put um, a little bit of wire in um, and we'll deal with that possibly after we've painted. That goes in perfectly well as well, just make sure we've got that orientation correct. Yeah. Right, so the holes that we did drill in at the earlier stage is for the base of the lamp that goes on the side. Now there was quite a big ejector pin mark in there which I filled with Mr. Surfacer and I just need to sand flat. dealt with okay so let's just test fit that there's a larger lug and a smaller lug which ensures that you locate it correctly yeah that's gone in without any problems so let's glue that in um, and then put the lamp housing in Gonna have no issues with the fit of that either. To just make sure that's nice and straight. Obviously, it'll probably need some form of cable, um, which I'm guessing ran up the side of the turret there. What is a little disappointing is that the lens is solid plastic, so you're gonna have to paint that silver or or something or possibly uh, punch out um, a glass lens I'm actually going to leave this off and see if I can fabricate um, a, piece, a, a bit of clear for that right then that completes step 23 so uh, next step 24 is to put the blade on if you're using it and put the turret on. So let's do that and see what the finished build looks like. We've got some very tiny ejector pin marks in the bottom of the blade here, four of them, and then there's some up there which, if you put some mud or something up there, you won't see them. Otherwise, you probably, well, you're still probably not gonna see them, so perhaps wouldn't worry about those ones, but these are one filling quite heavy seams on the side that needed um, cutting off and then they just hang on the two lumps there. Now I'm not going to glue those on at this stage because there are some um, decals that need to go behind it. So I'm not gluing this on until after I've painted this. So that will go on top of that like that. It'll actually end up sitting on top of the photo etch. But well, that is our tank done. So let's just have a look at that. I'm going to take that off because I'll go and drop it anyway. So we haven't done the tools yet. So that we have some tools to go on there, but otherwise this is complete. Um, and we will do the tracks as part of the painting process. We'll be 
candles are dropping off. Um, so there we go. So I think that looks pretty decent. Okay, now we've actually completed the build stage, it's worth just reflecting on um, what I think of um, this kit. Now I don't build tanks very often anymore, but I used to build almost exclusively tanks 20 years ago. Um, and what I would say is, as tank kits go, that's as good as any. Um, highlights, I think, the, the fit is really, really good 99% of the time. We had two issues, one of them relatively minor, one of them a little bit more serious, as in the um, ring that goes around the, the hull machine gun. Um, other than that, there was no issues with the fit whatsoever. A lot of it just clicked in place and, and really didn't need, need glue. Um, I think um, the level of detail is um, really nice, um, the surface detail is good, it possibly lacks some texturing um, and there's one or two places where they've done as best as they can um, for an injected moulded kit um, but um, the aftermarket boys I'm sure will will add a little bit of finesse and, and add things like um, photo etched um, braces here would probably look a little bit better. Um, these sights on top of the turret will probably look better replaced with photo etch. Um, clearly the handles on the hatches could do with being replaced with, with etch or wire handles, um, scratch wired handles. But the base kit is, is a proper good solid kit. Um, low lights I, I, unfortunately, and I really don't want to say this, but I think it's the etch. Um, the etch here on on the back doesn't fit where it's supposed to fit, and the instructions are quite vague about it, and what you get is different than what's depicted in the instructions. So I actually think that's quite, quite poor. Um, however, we have shown you how to put it on and make it look good, so it's not the end of the world. I'm more bothered about the etch at the front here. Um, the fact that they've done that in four pieces when they could have done it in two that you, you folded um, to the right angle, um, I think would have been a far better solution, a far stronger solution and a much easier, quicker solution. Um, so unfortunately that, that ends up being the low light, um, you know. Um, however, uh, once they're on and, and you've got them right, it does improve the look that those parts are photo to etch. Um, so, so far, I would say don't think, oh, it's Airfix, I'm not going to buy it. I know there are some people that have a little bit of an Airfix prejudice. Uh, I don't know why um, some of their aircraft kits that have come out in the last couple of years are, are market leading, in my view. Uh, they're really, really good. You have to remember that Airfix aim at um, a pocket money type market often and I think what they do they do really well. In terms of the instructions I was a little disappointed. Um, clearly the front and back cover is Airfix and the rest of it is Academy. Um, the Academy bit is the bit that lets it down. Um, there are They don't shout out the colours as you go um, which I miss. Uh, air, modern Airfix instructions are infinitely better than this. Um, I think there's areas where the instructions could be greatly improved. There's areas um, where they don't call out the part numbers properly, um, so the polycaps aren't mentioned. For example, um, the construction of the turret, I felt um, this bit. Here, I think it's back to front. It makes much more sense to construct the sides onto the turret lid and then put the base in than to do it the way that they've done it. 
Um, that makes no sense at all. Um, so yeah, I, but again, it's not a biggie. The instructions are clear enough for you to assemble the kit with ease. Um, even if you're fairly new to building kits and you're a youngster and not familiar even with kit instructions, these aren't gonna give you any any difficulties. I'm just nitpicking in, in fairness. What's also, uh, so, so the kit I think is pretty good and we'll have a look at the link and length tracks when we, in the next video when we come to paint it. What's probably worth looking at now as well is what's left over. Um, because that I always find quite interesting because it gives you an example uh, or an understanding of what might be coming. So now we've cut everything off the sprue, we have quite a small pile of um, spares. So the first thing is we've got some spare um, wheels um, which aren't called out for in this kit. So clearly there's a plan for something else in the future. We also have a load of poly caps that aren't used and I suspect you'll never use more than, than a couple. So why they've put all that in I don't know. We have um, what l looks like different components for different coupler arrangements. Um, so obviously there's different versions coming out at some point um, and we've got some tow row pens that aren't used so clearly they have a plan for that at some point. We have another two different types of um, main gun with different uh, mantles for them. So there's clearly other versions coming out with the, the shorter gun barrel, the longer gun barrel there, um, and one or two other sort of minor parts. Um, interestingly, there's a different um, hatch arrangement here that hasn't been used, that um, clearly the intent to use at some point. And then we've got this side piece which goes on the front of the hull. We used it on uh, this side here. Now if you took this box off and put that in, you'd have another side loading hatch. So I think at some point they're gonna do the, the double side loading hatches. So there's clearly quite a few variants uh, in the pipeline, which I think is exciting. Um, Okay, so we're going to wrap that up for this video. Um, I've got to say, I've probably enjoyed building that. I haven't built a tank for um, a few years, and that was a lot of fun. Um, would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, someone asked me, how does it stand up to the Tamiya tank? Don't know. Never built the Tamiya tank. Um, what I can tell you is, this is this is new tool. I think you the side bins are options that the Tamiya tank doesn't give you. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you've got a little bit more options there. This kit builds up really, really well and you end up with something that looks like a Cromwell tank. So all good. Right, in the next video, we'll look at putting the tracks together, um, the Lincoln length tracks and giving it a paint job. Um, I don't know whether we'll weather it in the next video or it'll be the video after, but I'll try and do one more video to capture completing the build. Okay, thanks for looking in. Hope um, this was informative and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care, everyone.